Nationals. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Don Cricky. Welcome to one of the premier events in the world's fastest motorsport, drag racing. Some of these automotive creations are really land-based rocket ships, capable of traveling upwards of 290 miles an hour in just a quarter of a mile. This is the 10th of 19 national events in the NHRA Winston Drag Racing Series, a series that offers over $18 million in prize money. More and more upsets have been a big story. To tell us more about that, here's Steve Evans. Well, Don, the upset started raging earlier today in round number one of Funny Car Competition. And it began with that man, Tom Hoover, at the wheel of the family funny car from the Minneapolis area. He was up against John Force, the points leader in the category, the winner of three races this year, including the last two. And any fan that assumed that Tom Hoover just came here for the fun of it was dead wrong. At the finish line, it was a race neither driver could call from the cockpit. Yeah, I don't like those. Uh it makes it tough, but he, he's a good racer, and uh, he did well, and uh, I don't even know what happened. Our car it ran good enough to win a race. It's just he come back from where he was and stepped up on it. Now, Tom Hoover will quickly tell you his success in round one was due solely to the talents of that man, his 84-year-old crew chief and father, George. And you know, one of George's tricks to get traction on this racetrack is as old as the hills. He attached a weight bar full of lead at the very back of the car, and that gave Tom the bite he needed to beat John Force. Now, there was another major upset in round one in pro stock. Jerry Ekman, also the points leader like John Force, he fell at his own hand. Look at this, up against Kenny Del it was Ekman leaving way too soon. The red light comes on. Automatic disqualification. So much for the early action in Pro Stock and Funny Car. To bring us up to date on top fuel, who better than the only man to have ever won three world championships, Big Daddy Don Garlitz. Well, Steve, it may have been upsets in Funny Car and Pro Stock, but in Top Fuel, the same two veterans who have been battling it out now for two years are still in the hunt, Joe Amato and Gary Ormsby. And they won't face each other till the final round. But before that can happen, they must get by two cars, Frank Holly and Dick LaHaye, who incidentally both recorded better ETs in their first round performance than either of these two teams. So that puts a lot of pressure on the Amato and the Ormsby teams to step up the performance of these cars without spinning the tires. Pressure, that's what this sport is all about. Indeed it is, Don, and we're ready to race now. Second round competition of Top Fuel and two top competitors from Northern California are matched, including the reigning Winston champion, Gary Ormsby, against veteran Frank Bradley. Now, Gary Ormsby leads the point but we can see just how tight they are when you consider, as you look at these numbers, that each round win is worth 200 points. In top field, we can see a major remodeling of the standings here today. Probably not so in close talk or funny car because of the earlier upsets. Both drivers coming back after their tire heating, track heating burnouts. Ormsby, as we said, is the defending champion. He also won the last race in the circuit in Montreal, Canada, just two weeks ago. Frank Bradley, he's currently seventh in the points, could make a good move here this weekend. The last national event he won was uh, the California Nationals last year. He's been in victory lane here as well, back in 84. Don Gallas, how does the track look to you today? The track looks real good. However, the near lane, the drivers are a little afraid of it. It won't hold quite the power. Well, both Frank Bradley and Gary Ormsby now begin the staging process as they very carefully position their front wheels and in infrared beam when all the lights are aglow on the Christmas tree, and they are, they are off. And it is Ormsby. Lee Beard, his crew chief, looks on. Gary covers the quarter mile in 5.03 seconds, 280 miles per hour to Frank Bradley's 5.04. The race wasn't as close as it should have been, Don Garlis, because Bradley didn't get as good a start as Ormsby. Ormsby takes a tremendous starting line advantage, more commonly referred to in the pits as a hole shot. And Bradley tries desperately to make up the difference. But here we see just how important it is to leave the line first. Here's Steve. He ran 5.04. I bet you could feel him there. I could feel, I could hear, I couldn't see him, but I could hear the, the sound. You know, there's definitely when someone's beside you, there's more sound to it. Great job. Thank you. Gary Ormsby, who went to the top of the class in top fuel competition a year ago. Under construction at Raceway Park, a tremendous new facility behind the start line. This will house all the press and electronic timing facilities. And when it's completed by next year's competition, there will also be 31 corporate suites here. Back in the staging lane, Dick LaHaye is concerned about two things, defending his Summer Nationals Championship, and about a new problem facing the top fuel driver, 
Don Gallus took a look at that. In my 37 years of drag racing, I have had a lot of firsts, most of which I've been very proud of, but one was real scary, and that happened right here at the Summer Nationals in 1986 when I did that giant wheel stand, commonly known today as a top fuel blowover. Now, the latest person to join this exclusive club is Don the Snake Perdome, and it happened just a couple of weeks ago at the Grand Nationals in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, when he experienced a top fuel blower. Like me, Perdome walked away uninjured, but the car was totally destroyed, and that's why you won't see him competing here this weekend. The reason these cars are so prone to these giant wheel stands is they're long, they're very light in the front, and the very nature of their performance dictates that a lot of weight be on the rear wheels, and this rear wing helps that. It generates over 3,000 pounds of down pressure, and so that has become a concern of these teams. So the Kenny Bernstein team, they've moved the wing forward, they've moved the wing down, and they're very sensitive about the angle of attack of that wing. On the front, they put a much larger wing than is necessary. It generates over 300 pounds of down pressure. Perdome's car only had a 90-pound wing on the front. But I think one more thing would be a great addition, and that would be wheelie bars, as are seen on Jim Head's car. I think in the future, NHRA will mandate wheelie bars on the top fuel dragsters. Well, Don, what kind of reaction have you gotten from the other drivers on your wheelie bar position? Well, a couple of the big names, Steve, have been downright negative about wheelie bars. So negative, in fact, that I've been considering wearing a disguise when I circulate around in the pits. Well, I think they laughed when you built your rear-engine dragster. Now everyone has one. That shot we just saw was the onboard camera in Kenny Bernstein's machine, the four-time funny car champ yet to win a top fuel. Joe Amato has amassed a tremendous number of national event victories at two Winston championships, and in round number one, he sent Jim Head home, wheelie bars and all. Joe Amato, the low qualifier, matched against another drag racing superstar, Kenny Bernstein. And Kenny Bernstein does not have lane choice here. That went to Joe Amato, who ran quicker than Kenny did in round number one and earned that right. And Bernstein, as Don Garland said, may be concerned about this near lane where Joe Amato has put him. We're just about ready for a start. Round two, top fuel competition. You're on board. Oh, something breaks in Bernstein's car. You saw Amato just streak away to five seconds flat. 281 miles per hour. The lowest elapsed time of the day for Joe Amato, while Kenny Bernstein's run of bad luck in top fuel continues. This is NBC's Sports World, and today it's brought to you by Budweiser. With that clean, crisp, cold taste, this Bud's for you. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Castro GTX engineered for today's smaller cars. And by Armorall, because only Armorall works like Armorall. In today's hotter running engines, wear is a greater problem than ever before. Oil breakdown can shorten the life of vital engine parts. That's why there's Castrol. Castrol provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol, because driving today can be a grind. Castrol, engineered for today's smaller cars. Drag racing results on Castrol's NHRA now. Dial 1-900-468-NHRA. All of these championship-winning drivers have one thing in common. Goodyear Racing Eagles. The race-winning technology that's found in the Goodyear Racing Eagles can also be found in the world's best-selling line of high-performance street tires. Goodyear Eagle Street Radios. The champions know, and it's why we say, the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. The Ford Probe. <laughs>
The champion, Smokin' Joe Frazier. The challenger, Muhammad Ali. It was their first encounter. 15 rounds of one of the most grueling battles ever fought for the heavyweight championship of the world. Was this the greatest fight ever? Find out next weekend on the NBC Saturday Sports Showcase. With Steve Evans and Don Garlitz, this is Don Crickey back at the Budweiser Summer Nationals, the signal event in auto racing in northeastern America. And as always, the stands are packed at Old Bridge Township, New Jersey. And they'll love this matchup. In the far lane is Dick LaHaye. We're in second round, top fuel competition, remember. In the near lane is Laurie Johns. Laurie has won three races this year, briefly led the points, and has currently slipped down to the third position. The last time we saw Laura here on NBC Sports, she was one happy lady from Corpus Christi, Texas. She had won the opening race of the year, the Winter Nationals, and her first top fuel title. The celebration at the far end was something to see. And the man she beat in that final round of Pomona was Dick LaHaye, who she now faces here at Raceway Park. We saw LaHaye one year ago win this top fuel title, but with such tremendous back pain, he had to be lifted from the car before the victory celebration could begin. I'm happy to say that Dick LaHaye has since completely recovered from those back problems. Dick LaHaye is a street smart veteran who's known for getting the most out of his equipment. His daughter Kim is his crew chief. And she was voted crew chief of the year back in 1988. Dick LaHaye in that favorite far lane. Laurie John's on the left side of your screen and they're away. A good drag race in top field, but it is LaHaye by a clean car lane. 5.06 seconds to cover the 1,320 feet. He accumulated 274 miles per hour en route to Laurie's 5'11 at 272. Back in the staging lane, we're ready for the next race that includes 52-year-old Gene Snow, who's won three national events in top fuel racing during his career. Frank Hawley's his opponent, the man who retired to start a drag racing driving school in Gainesville, Florida, and is now back competing. Frank is driving for his injured friend, Daryl Gwynn, who was badly injured in a race in England. Right now, Steve is with Dick LaHaye. Joe Amato came over just uh, before the interview began and wished you good luck against Gary Ormsby, and he means it. Oh, I understand that completely. I need it, too. <laughs> Everybody would like to get the green car of Ormsby's out of this points chase. Dick LaHaye, who's currently fourth in points, beating Gary Ormsby in the semifinals would help a lot. It would also help Joe Amato's chances at a championship this year. You know, if there's a driver willing to try Big Daddy's idea about the wheelie bars, or any other idea for that matter, it's the innovator Gene Snow. And of course, Frank Hawley proved in his very first ride in this car at the Spring Nationals earlier this year why Darrell Gwynn picked him. He won that race. Gene Snow in the near lane. Frank Hawley in the far lane. Snow is staged. Hawley's still moving forward. Hawley is in. A dead even start. Oh, and Gene Snow loses traction in that near lane. Frank Hawley, 5.02 to 80. And in drag racing, if you ain't got traction, you ain't got nothing. So that sets the semifinal pairings. Joe Amato will go against Frank Hawley. Amato has lane choice because of his better elapsed time. Semifinal pairing two, the defending Summer Nationals champion, Dick LaHaye against Gary Ormsby, the defending Winston champion. And Gary has lane choice. Back in the staging lane, Bruce Larson is getting set for second round competition in funny cars. Scott Coletta will be his opponent. Speed costs money, as Steve Evans learned earlier. When funny car star John Forrest and his crew leave their Southern California base camp to engage the enemy in 20 skirmishes across the continent, they bring this, the war wagon, full of ammunition. Most critical, heavy artillery, complete racing engines, $32,000 a piece. If they only blow up five, it's a conservative year. Now, they do try to fix a lot of pieces. Austin Coyle, the ordnance officer and crew chief in charge of that, and always scanning his computer, trying to find better, safer, and quicker ways to run this car. Now, the crew already has a lot of the ammunition out here where they can get at it at a moment's notice. A supercharger, they own about six. You only get about five or six runs on one before it has to be air freighted back to the manufacturer. They're about $3,500 a piece. Spark plugs, check and feed. What's 2,000 a year when you get them free? 
crankshafts, another story. 3,500 bucks, maybe 10 runs on one before it's junk. You have to have a complete spare differential, brakes and all, ready to go in again at a moment's notice. They do not carry spare bodies. There's no room in the war wagon. Two are at home in California, crated, ready to be airshipped eight hours anywhere in the country. Clutch parts, the big deal in nitro drag racing today. They'll go through a ton of this stuff, discs and floaters and pressure plates, trying to find that magic combination. Now over here are the kind of foot soldiers of drag racing, and that's pistons. They'll go through 300 or so a year of these little devils because of things like this. You run them lean, and they burn up. Lots of sleeves for the pistons to go up and down in. Though all in all, as you can tell, war is hell, especially on John Force's checkbook. And especially when he gets beaten in round one by Tom Hoover. Tom Hoover's on the line now. He's been racing three decades, but at 49 is just a kid. When you consider his 84-year-old dad, George Hoover, is his crew chief. And he is a partner here, too. There is Ruth Hoover. And George and Ruth are about to celebrate their 65th wedding anniversary next Tuesday. Tom Hoover last won an NHRA national event competition way back in 1979 at the Winter Nationals. Ed McCullough, well, he is currently second in the Winston points, and with John Forrest going out early, McCullough could take the lead if he wins here overall today. There's McCullough in the far lane. Obviously, he had lane choice. In the near lane is Tom Hoover, who is really an underdog here. There's no question about that. A good start, and it's McCullough who loses traction in the favored lane. George Hoover looks on and sees the wind light for son Tom. McCullough out with loss of traction. You're only as old as you feel, and 84-year-old George Hoover must feel great. He's with Don Garlitz now. Well, George, what a wonderful way to be celebrating your 65th wedding anniversary. Oh, and how much fun I've had all those years with the same wife. <laughs> more, more years than I'm old. <laughs> well, a lot of things happen in this life, don't they? Even when you get to my age, you know, it gets to the point where they make a big fuss over me. Even if I'm in, no good at all. <laughs> a beloved figure on the NHRA circuit, crew chief George Hoover, 84 years young. Now Bruce Larson smokes those tires. The better to get traction. And he'll be up against Scott Coletta. First, let's go to Steve. Tom, when you smoke the tires, you thought, that's it. That's right. I say, uh, there's an old cliche, it wasn't pretty, but we'll take it. Did you see then him have his problems? We were right alongside of each other, and I seen Ed drop back. I was also in trouble talking about weight transfer, Dad. The front end was going to the lane. I said, hey, he's smoking tires. Don't screw up and stay in your lane, and that's what I did. You have to take that weight bar off, huh? It's got to go today. It's coming off. He's referring to the bar his dad put over his rear wheels when he raced John Force. It was a case of what might have been for Ed McCullough. A bad run cost him a chance to take the points lead. And with that happening, it appears the only important points movement will be in the top fuel category. And of course, we'll be seeing more of that later on. Funny car competition round number two continues with that beautiful car in the far lane driven by Scott Coletta, who won his first national event just last year, the Super Nationals in Houston, Texas. He is up against the reigning Winston champion, Bruce Larson. And if anybody, Don Garlitz, told you that by the 10th race of the 1990 season, Larson would not have tasted victory, you wouldn't have bought that. You sure wouldn't have, Steve. But that's the way it's been. The world champions really have a difficult time the following year. I guess everybody's shooting at them. They're off. Larson and Coletta both get traction. From behind, it's Bruce Larson. That will certainly help the image of the near lane. A 5.33 and 2.70. Scott Coletta departs with a 5.41 second lap time. Scott Coletta takes a definite starting line advantage and Scott was running real well today. It looked like he might be able to put Larson away. But as the cars continue down the course, Larson begins to make a little bit more power and starts to edge by Coletta. Steve's with the winner, Bruce Larson. When you saw McCullough and Hoover smoke the tires, what did you think? I just had to sit in there and drive my own race. By that time, the car's all set up and the driver's programmed and there's nothing you can do. <laughs> Good luck. Bruce Larson, who's headed to the semifinals as our coverage of the Summer Nationals continues after this. Nothing beats a winning team Pushing hard, reaching for the dream Nothing beats clean, crisp and cold Got the king of fear, you're on a roll 
Imagine a world without Armor All Protectant. How far would you have to go to protect your dash, seats, and tires? Sure, you could just keep your car in the garage. But remember, only Armor All works like Armor All. Today's high compression engines not only rev high, they can run hotter than regular small car engines. Their searing heat can begin to break down in oil immediately. That's why there's Castrol, the motor oil that in every grade provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol before your engine does something to get you heated up. Castrol, engineered for today's smaller cars. Drag racing results on Castrol's NHRA now. Dial 1-900-468-NHRA. In football, no matter how thorough the preparation, how exceptional the strategy, how precise the execution, you can't make it to the top if you don't have the horses. Will McDonough, O.J. Simpson, and two-time Emmy winner Bob Costas, NFL Live, we've got the lineup. Don Crickey back at the Budweiser Summer Nationals as the mechanics fine-tune Gary Ormsby's top fuel dragster. He's about to head into a semifinal matchup with Dick LaHaye. Between races, the search for more horsepower never ends. But first, let's check out second round racing in funny car competition. Jim White is ready to run against Chuck Etchell. The winner goes to the semifinals. Try as he might, Etchell has never won a funny car title. His opponent, Jim White, knows the feeling. Neither has he. But there's really only two big names left in competition, Larson and Mark Oswald. Upsets have been the flavor of this entire event. Before it's over, we might see a first-time winner. Now, Chuck Edgell's blue car did go to a final round this year in Atlanta, but with his crew chief, Paul Smith, driving. Edgell's was unavailable due to business. Now, Jim White, maybe he's never won an NHRA national event, but this is the best equipment, best team he has ever been affiliated with. He's got a genuine shot at it here today. And now the critical moment before the start of each drag race as they inch to the stage line. And even though Jim White did not have lane choice, certainly Bruce Larson's 533 in that same lane had to be a real confidence builder for him. The traction is there if you've got the clutch, the power, and the tire combination just right. They think they have everything right, but you don't know till that green light hits. Would be any fun if it was easy to do. They're away. Oh, and the tires come loose on Jim White's car. He has to shut it down to maintain control. Chuck Edgels. 5.29, as good an ET as we have seen all day in funny car competition. Wow. 271 miles per hour as Johnny West waits. He'll be in the next pair. Back at the starting area, Johnny West watches the competition get ready. Johnny will be running against Mark Oswald. Johnny West, a hard-driving funny car pilot, still waiting for that breakthrough win. Mark Oswald, a big-name funny car driver, 37 years old from Cincinnati, will be his opponent. Right now, Steve is with Chuck Edgell. You've got the lane choice. You're 29 quicker than Bruce Larson's 33. You can decide which side of the track. He beat us four times in the semis last year. We need him bad. <laughs> that 5.29 of Chuck Edgell's was a career best. Even though Mark Oswald won the Mid-South Nationals this year, the team is still very frustrated. They can't get all the horsepower they're capable of making to the ground. 
Now, Johnny West may have never won anything, but he certainly contributed to the upset flavor of this event. In round number one earlier today, when he met up with this man, Casey Spurlock, who was the number one qualifier at 5.19 seconds, and no stranger to NBC Sports. We saw him win the Winter Nationals, the season opener earlier this year. Now, with Johnny West in the near lane, Spurlock in the far lane, and the number one qualifier went out, lots of traction. Johnny West advanced. Spurlock and I talked about the unpredictability of this sport. Well, sometimes that's the way it goes in drag racing, Steve. Uh, when you're making as much horsepower as this Ronnie Swearingen uh, crew team is, uh, sometimes it bites you a little bit. And, uh, you know, it happened to John Force at the Winter Nationals. Fortunately, we were on the receiving end of that, and uh, it happened to us here. Burlock referring to his first round win over Force at the Winter Nationals, and KC went on to win that event, but he'll not win the Summer Nationals. He's out. Johnny West formerly drove for the Roland Leon team. The seat that is now occupied by Jim White. And now he's finding out just how difficult it can be to run your own team, especially against competition like Mark Oswald in the far lane. They're up. And a, oh, a huge wheel stand by Oswald. He's trying to come back, but it is not enough. Johnny West benefits from Mark Oswald's tire smoking wheel stand of 569 at 265 miles per hour pushes Johnny West into the semifinals. Johnny West's car moved first slightly, but the tremendous power and clutch combination of Mark Oswald's vehicle pushes his car in front of West almost instantly. But the front end comes up and Oswald has to momentarily lift off the throttle. He steps back on it, but the tires continue to smoke. West's car stays in front. Oswald steps on it again. He almost catches West, but to no avail. And in semi-final pairing one of Funny Car Competition, Johnny West goes against Tom Hoover. West has the lane choice. Semi-final pairing two, Bruce Larson versus Chuck Etchells, and Etchells has the lane choice. Now Steve is with Johnny West at the far end. There are three funny cars going to the semifinals that, quite frankly, nobody expected to be there. And Johnny West, congratulations. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. You're yeah. one of those guys. <laughs> yeah, it's fun to be there for once. You know, it's just, um, we've had such a down month. You know, we've been going four or five races and stumbling and having problems. You know, there's just been a lot of people behind us on this thing. You know, my wife, my daughter, I'm too bad. sorry they can't be here to enjoy the few times that we do do good. Working today. Yeah, you know, thank you. Johnny's doing good as now we go to pro stock competition, semifinal round. And they are just a completely different type of race car from what we've seen. A driver like Mark Powick, who's the current national record holder in the class at 7.22 seconds, very busy inside one of these cars, as will his opponent be, Kenny Delco, who won this year's Gator Nationals, finally broke through. I say they're busy because they have four-speed transmissions. The dragsters, the funny cars, all the driver does there is stomp on the pedal and hold on. These boys are very, very busy in their seven seconds down the quarter of a mile. Great start. Powick near lane. Delco far lane. Oh, the electronic finish line, Judge. Thank goodness we have one. Calls it Powick. 7.34. Delco's losing. 7.36. A typically close pro stock encounter. All of these championship winning drivers have one thing in common, Goodyear Racing Eagles. The race winning technology that's found in the Goodyear Racing Eagles can also be found in the world's best selling line of high performance street tires, Goodyear Eagles Street Radials. The champions know, and it's why we say, the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. When you drive as many miles a year as I do, you gain a lot of respect for the guys who keep you going professional mechanics who fix your car. It takes a lot of smarts up here to stay up to date on electronic and mechanical procedures for more than 300 different car models. And they change every year. Respect them? You bet I do. And when these professionals insist on quality auto parts without running all over town, they turn to CarQuest auto parts stores. Yeah, you'll find it at CarQuest. There 
wild. <laughs> They're reckless. Put it! They're insane. But at Air America... I don't want to crash twice in one day! Don't worry, I crash better than anyone I know. That's company policy. Mel Gibson. Why don't you go first? No, I don't want to go first. Hey, okay, I'll go first. Robert Downey Jr. No, I don't want to go second. All right. Air America. This film has not yet been rated. Starts Friday, August 10th at a theater near you. Hall of Famer Nancy Lopez, Pat Bradley, Betsy King, and the best in women's golf. Key off at the Mazda LPGA Championship next weekend on NBC. Back at the Budweiser Summer Nationals, a rising star of top fuel dragsters, Lori Johns, although out of this summer national competition, always a popular figure with the fans. Meanwhile, Johnny West in the pit area, unlike most drivers, he does his own work. Johnny's an expert behind the wheel and with the toolbox in the pit area. Absolutely, Johnny West captains his own ship. All right, it's time for race number two in the Pro Stock semifinals. Bob Glidden, you're on board with him. Up against the Dodge of Daryl Alderman. Now, these cars are 2,350 pounds. That's the minimum weight. 500 cubic inches, that's the maximum engine size. No blowers, no nitromethane fuel. They have to use carburetors, a pair of them, and racing gasoline. You want a little pump shock, Daryl Alderman pays almost $5 a gallon for that. Alderman has three wins this year. He's the lone Dodge competitor in the sport. Bob Glidden only has one win this year, highly unusual for the 10-time Winston champion. He's the only Ford probe in the sport. Unlike the Nitro cars, these pro stock drivers bring the RPMs way up to scream those engines, slide their foot off the clutch, and they are gone. On board with Glidden. Glidden sees Alderman in front of him, and Alderman wins it. 7.35 to a quicker 7.31. Daryl Alderman had the better reaction time, even though he ran a little bit slower. He got to the finish line first. So the defending Winston champion Bob Glidden is out of the Summer Nationals. It sets up a final pairing, matching Mark Pollock against Daryl Alderman. Pollock has the lane choice. Meanwhile, in Tom Hoover's pit, his dad, George, has decided to leave the weight bar on. Yeah, George only looks at the back of the car and sees the tire smoking, never mind whether the front wheels are up or not. Crew Chief George Hoover and his wife Ruth getting set for a big day of their anniversary coming up Tuesday. George says they met on a Monday. He told Ruth, meet me on Friday. We'll get married. That was 65 years ago. So much for long courtship. <laughs> okay, it's time for Top Fuel Semifinals. In the near lane, Frank Hawley, a very short courtship with the Darrell Gwynn team, but he's already won one out of three drag races. Joe Amato had lane choice, and we find him on the far side, taking their time here. Neither one is stage. Finally, Amato breaks through. Hawley inches in. Semifinals, Top Fuel. Joe Amato, ahead at half track. And at the finish line, a car length victory for Amato. 5-0-2, two hundredths off his best today at 277 miles an hour. Frank Holly almost matches his performance, 5.05. Back at the start line, Dick LaHaye with 4,000 horses behind him, ready to burn out. The better to get traction. If you lose traction, you lose the drag race. Earlier I said what kind of pressure this sport generates. Here we see some. Ormsby has just watched the motto win his round. He must beat LaHaye if he's going to stay in the hunt. On the other hand, LaHaye must beat Ormsby if he wants to make any kind of a showing in the points. And Ormsby is also revved up and ready. Let's go to Steve Evans with Joe Amato. Not only in America you were screaming when you got America. out. Okay, you know, it's it's when you come to your home track and get to the final, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, you know. What do the fans say when they come around your trailer? Well, they all, they all, uh, they motivate you, you know, they say, you know, we love to race with you from the East Coast and whip all them California hot shots, you know, because all, all these top fuel races have been strong from the West Coast, and finally we've got someone from the East Coast that can carry the torch. Joe Amato going to his fifth final round this year. And he'll face one of these two men, Ormsby or LaHaye, ready for their semifinal run. Notice how carefully they stage these vehicles. And once they are staged, you don't wait for green. You go when you see yellow or you're late. They both react well to the light, but LaHaye breaks right off the starting line. Gary Ormsby thunders through at 505, 282. Dick LaHaye never really got to fight. It broke right off the starting line, and the supercharger belt is off of that engine. No supercharger, no power. And no repeat title for Dick LaHaye. He's out of the Summer Nationals. The final round pairing is set. Gary Ormsby against Joe Amato. 
Amato with the lane choice. One night he left. Now he's on the move. Searching for the perfect day. Searching for the perfect time. He's moving. He's moving, but only a phone call away. Talk to me right now. Midnight Caller, now Friday at 10 on NBC. They'll all be cruising next weekend to the state fairgrounds in Salem. It's good guys Northwest get together. Hundreds and hundreds of hot rods, customs, classics, street machines, trek trucks, and more. Manufacturers displays, even a used parts swap me. And as if that weren't enough. <laughs> Saturday on the Budweiser stage, it's Paul Revere and the Raiders. The good guys Northwest get together all next weekend at the State Fairgrounds in Salem. At Oak Unlimited, we build nothing but high-quality oak furniture. Let me show you what to look for in quality furniture. Look for dados, which interlock the shelf and the side of the cabinet. Look for solid oak skid plates, which protect your floor and your furniture from damage. All the furniture we build at Oak Unlimited is glued, nailed, and screwed together. We use nothing but Accuride drawer guides, which are the best money can buy. If you consider yourself to be a wise shopper, come out and see us at one of our five locations. This summer, capture the beauty of the great Northwest with a camera from the Shutterbug, where you always get the lowest prices guaranteed. Right now, save on the Canon E51 8mm camcorder featuring Canon's autofocus 8x power zoom lens, now just $8.99. And the Pentax IQ Zoom 700, the Pentax camera with autofocus zoom and auto flash is only $159. Whether you're a beginner or an expert, they have the camera for you at the Shutterbug with their new location in downtown Portland on Southwest Broadway. Expect something extra from Pete and Tracy, weeknights on News 8. With Steve Evans and Don Garlitz, this is Don Crickey back at Raceway Park near English Town, New Jersey, where the fun never stops for these race fans on final day. But in the pit area, it's a very serious business. Crew Chief Tim Richards, who engineers the horsepower for Joe Amato and his top fuel dragster, conferring in the pits as they get set for the top fuel final of the Summer Nationals. Joe Amato will be facing Gary Ormsby in the finals, and there's plenty of action in Ormsby's pit right now. As his power plant is adjusted to get the maximum horsepower, and there's the man who can do it, his crew chief, Lee Beard. The final round in Top Fuel here at the Summer Nationals certainly represents the two finest teams in Top Fuel racing today. And out on the starting line as the semifinals of Funny Car Competition get underway, the two drivers involved may not be considered the finest teams in all of drag racing, but on this day, they certainly have shown their medal. Look at old George Hoover, 84 years old. He's so happy to be in the semifinals. And also darned happy is their grandson, Troy, hanging out on the starting line with his 84-year-old grandmother, Ruth, as they look on with fingers crossed. Tom Hoover meets up with Johnny West. And Don Carlos, I don't think you can pick a favorite here. You certainly can't. And an interesting side note is, West has lane choice and has chosen the lane that has not been in favor with the drivers today. It is Tom Hoover smoking the tires. George says, ah, nuts. They got just a little greedy in that far lane and lost traction. Johnny West wins it, goes to the final round at 560, 263 miles per hour. Back at the starting line, Don Garlitz is with Tom's mother, Ruth. Don? Well, the party's over, but it was a lot of fun while it lasted, wasn't it, Mom? Sure. No use worrying about it. That's right. There'll be another race. That's right. You'll win one of these one of these fine days. It's been 11 years since Sun Town has won in funny car competition, but the Hoovers are always back to race another day. Now it might be time to start celebrating that 65th wedding anniversary. No time for celebration yet for Bruce Larson. A man who's won a ton of funny car titles. His opponent, Chuck Etchells, has yet to win one, but he could today. He's in the semifinal round. Let's go back and visit now with the man who won the other semifinal matchup. Johnny West, finally a final. <laughs> well, I saw a few with Rollins deal, but on my own, it's been a long time. A home-built hot rod. you got to be thrilled. Shade tree back hot rod. <laughs> uh, it's just, uh, it's nice. It really is. Makes you feel decent for once that you can run with some of these guys. We may not be running the numbers, but at least we're getting there first. But 
in the final, can you run the number? Could you risk your precious parts to run a number to win it? Well, actually, we are trying to run a, a good number. We've stuck some of this high gear stuff in here, the high tech guys have got. We're just murdering clutches, and I don't know what to do about it. You can't stop it. We hope you find it. Thanks. Whatever it takes to win, Johnny West looking for that breakthrough victory. No, Johnny West has been, well, to be honest, a bit fortunate today to get to the final round. Chuck Edgel's over in the far lane. His 529 is the class of the field. He has definitely earned his right to be here alongside the reigning champions. Oh, Larson leaves way too soon. Larson is disqualified. The red light blows on the tree. Chuck Edgel's goes to the final at 554. Bruce Larson wastes a much quicker 546. Here we have the classic example of the pressure of losing lane choice plus facing a competitor with a better performance. Bruce Larson was light years early and gave the race away with a red light. And now the final pairing for Funny Cars is set. Johnny West versus Chuck Etchells. Who right now is with Steve Evans. You know, with West 560 laps times all day, you've got a real shot at this thing. You can only beat yourself, really. Yeah, I agree with you, Steve. I think you're absolutely right, and uh, we're going to do everything in our power not to do that, you know? <laughs> See you then. Hey, thanks. The form chart taking a beating today. The favorites are out. Chuck Etchell's looking for a championship. Meanwhile, the Pro Stock finalists, and there's one of them, Mark Powick, relaxing in his pit area. He's got a lot of family support today. That's his mom, Irene, behind him. His dad, Emil, is here also. His opponent, Daryl Alderman, signing some autographs in the pit area. That these leisurely moments will give way to the heat of battle when we come back as they run for the championship at the NHRA Summer Nationals. The Ford Probe. Spend the summer? No. Make it a Bud Summer with Budweiser, Bud Light, and Bud Dry. Check inside 12 packs and you could win one of a hundred Bud Label pools. Look for me, Jeff Altman, where you buy your favorite beer. Because we're giving away pools all summer long. It's wet. It's wild. It's Bud Summer. Hey, man, you need sunscreen. You're starting to peel. Woo! Davy Allison believes. Mario and Michael Andretti believe. Don Prudhomme believes. You get out of a car what you put into it. Have a look, superior grace. Engine repairs can cost you. So remember, Fram oil filters protect your engine better because they stop more dirt the first time through than any other filter. Fram, you could pay a little now or a lot later. Uh -huh. Nothing starts more trouble than dirt. And no air filter stops more dirt than Fram. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, yeah. Fram, the end of the road for dirt. Next weekend, it's Ali versus Frazier, their first encounter. Was this the greatest fight ever? Then basketball's most intense international rivalry is renewed when the USA battles the Soviet Union. And it's an all-star extravaganza as the best in the NBA square off of the Magic Johnson NBA Classic. The Saturday Sports Showcase, only on NBC. Johnny West enjoying an exciting day, showing his funny car to the staging lanes as he gets set for what could be his first ever NHRA national title. He's in the finals of the funny car competition. But first, Daryl Alderman is ready to go in the Budweiser Summer Nationals in the finals of the Pro Stock competition. And he's matched against Mark Powick. Now, Daryl Alderman in the Dodge in the far lane has outmuscled one competitor today and outdriven two others. 
Mark Powick has outperformed everybody he has raced. But the cars come to the line in this final confrontation dead even. Both the performance of the cars and the drivers has been flawless for the entire afternoon of racing. The big question is, can Mark Powick win his first ever national event? He holds the national record, but is winless. Alderman outperforms Powick off the mark. Powick charges. Not enough. Daryl Alderman, 7.32, defeats Powick, 7.31. Don Garlitz is at the starting line with the winning crew chief, David Hutchins. I've never seen such phenomenal lights. He got some starting line advantage, didn't he? He's, he's just been doing excellent all weekend. He's brought us through this race. And he did it by hole shotting both Bob Glidden and Mark Powell. In the replay, we watch two evenly matched cars, but Daryl Alderman takes a 400th of a second starting line advantage over Mark Powell but only gives up one hundredth of a second in the performance of his car. The net gain is vividly demonstrated by the margin of victory for Darrell Alderman's Dodge. Alderman's first pro stock title this year. I said it before, but I've never seen you this loose. I'll say it again. What have you done mentally to, to tune up? Well, when your car's running good, it seems like you, you're you looser and you do better, you know. And uh, Mopar Performance Dodge really, really done good this weekend, and I just can't say enough about Wayne County and that's it i'm just excited i don't know what else to say i can't say enough about your driving well thank you a lot i really appreciate that they've done it the only dodge in the sport has won another pro stock race <laughs> one of these days honest <laughs> good fellowship and good sportsmanship at the summer nationals as alderman goes away with his fourth career title chuck etchells is hoping for his first in the funny car competition these summer nationals have produced upsets Johnny West is hoping that his racing luck will hold up one more time. He's yet to enter the winner's circle in a national event. Johnny West, a multi-talented man, he's not only the driver of this car, he also built it. The fans normally think when two cars get to the finals of a national event, they're big money operations, but that's not always the case. Remember John Force's war wagon we showed you earlier? All the parts you have to have to be successful in today's drag racing? Somebody forgot to tell Johnny West. All he's got in here is an echo. There's some oil over here. There's enough nitro maybe to get through this race. He might have to borrow a couple of gallons. His biggest asset, this electric welder and his gas welding equipment. Because if this car breaks, Johnny West fixes it himself. Just goes to show, if you chase the dream hard enough, you might catch it. And this might be the day for hard driving Johnny West. And in the far lane, Chuck Etchells, his pockets aren't very deep either. That's another team that runs very lean and has to be very careful with all of their parts and pieces. Right now, they put it all on the line. And even though Johnny West may not have a lot of spares, I guarantee you everything that is on the car is first rate. And I can tell you one other thing. Johnny West has run 560s on every run, so Etchells knows he's going to have to go down and turn the wind light on. Either way, we'll see a first-time winner. Johnny West hard into the wall. Etchells goes on to win it, but Johnny West has suffered severe damage to his home-built race car. The body is torn off the right side. He continues to make contact with the wall. He better stop that car. This racetrack comes to a very abrupt dead end. There's a highway on the other side and a wall. Oh, this is not going to be pretty. Oh, what an impact. That is the driver's worst nightmare hitting something like that so solid. Johnny West is in big trouble, obviously, at the end of the racetrack. NHRA Safety Safari immediately on the scene. If you're going to have this kind of problem, you want to have it when these guys are around. A flash of fire backs them up, and they again go in to attend to Johnny West, who is still strapped into the cage of that car. Let's have another look. Near lane, Don Garland. Watch this car carefully and watch the right rear tire. You'll see some sort of liquid get under it as it passes through your screen. And the car immediately hits the guardrail. What a tremendous impact. I personally feel that Johnny West was knocked out at that moment and no longer knew what the car was doing. The throttle was hung partially open. So as the fuel began to get to the engine, it got faster and faster. A driver's worst nightmare, unconscious in a so-called runaway car, and then to hit a solid guardrail at the end. A terrible accident. And as if Johnny hadn't been through enough already, 
This was all climaxed by the car being vaulted into the air. Emergency workers, MHRA safety safari, raceway park crews on the scene, clearing up the debris, but more importantly, attending to Johnny West, who is still in the car. And the report is that he is conscious. He has regained consciousness and is talking to them. Boy, that's, uh, that's some awful sweet news after what we've seen. Davy Allison believes. Mario and Michael Andretti believe. Don Prudhomme believes. You get out of a car what you put into it. Have a look at your regret. Apparently, there are still a few people out there who don't use Armor All Protectant. Imagine what they have to go through to protect their dash, seats, and tires. Yeah, you could go undercover, but remember, only Armor All works like Armor All. More police cars throughout America come on Goodyear Eagle radials than any other brand of tires. Why? Because they want it that way. Goodyear Eagles. The authorities know, and it's why we say the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. The champion, Smokin' Joe Frazier. The challenger, Muhammad Ali. It was their first encounter. Fifteen rounds of one of the most grueling battles ever fought for the heavyweight championship of the world. Was this the greatest fight ever? Find out next weekend on the NBC Saturday Sports Showcase. Back at the Summer Nationals near English Town, New Jersey, Johnny West's racing luck just ran out. Fortunately, he escaped without serious injury, which is hard to imagine as we take another look at this incredibly violent encounter with the retaining wall. Hard to believe that anyone could survive that. Steve Evans? Well, here is what remains of the body of the Johnny West funny car. The chassis has been impounded by the state of New Jersey. That's the law here. I'm with Dr. Joe Oliver, NHRA physician. What can you tell us, uh, Dr. Oliver, about Johnny West? Johnny West, unconscious at the point of impact uh, when we arrived at the scene, uh, was still unconscious, regained consciousness during the process of removing him from the car. His blood pressure and vital signs are stable, and the prognosis is excellent. Thank you, Dr. Oliver. The cleanup, by the way, has been completed down here, and it's time for the final in top fuel. And there's one of the best, Joe Amato, ready to make yet another run at a top fuel national title. And his opponent will be, as it so often is, Gary Ormsby. You know, the only people that can appreciate the acceleration sensation these drivers get are fighter pilots that are carrier-based that get that steam catapult launched down the deck. It's the only thing that even comes close. And there is Gary Ormsby's best gal, Susie Hoops. And you know what she's thinking right now? Go, Gary, go. And while Susie looks on, Joe Amato's best lady, his wife, Jerry, is an integral part of his crew. There is Jerry Amato as Joe backs to the start line after the burnout. Earlier, Steve had a chance to talk with both these ladies. Jerry, you and Gary Ormsby's best gal, Susie Hoops, are, are great friends. How do you two handle it when your husbands are out trying to beat the heck out of each other? Well, we just kind of go up there and do our normal thing. We don't let it bother us. You know, we're just, we're real close friends, in fact. And this never gets in the way? No, not at all. May the best man win, that's all you can say. I really like them, but when it comes down to the racing, that's it. I mean, I hope that we win. What then? After it's over, then they say, okay, and you're on neutral ground, but you can't help it. Those claws kind of do come out. <laughs> <laughs> 
And right now, the claws are out as we come to the moment of truth in the biggest race of the day, the top fuel final. Steve? Tremendous balance here. Equally matched crew chiefs and Richards and Beard. Equally matched drivers. Ormsby, Amato. The car is very similar. Now, this is a pick of final in top fuel. One thing that really is at stake is the Winston points lead. If Amato wins, he can take it. Gary Ormsby stages the final round of the Summer National. And it certainly was no disappointment. Susie Hoop celebrates Gary Ormsby's victory. Gary retains his points lead. Don Garlitz is at the starting line. Just how does it feel to watch them old man get after it like that? Absolutely incredible. I am so happy for them. Absolutely. To watch them work as hard as they do and they get the reward like this, it's wonderful. A real thrill, huh? Yeah, it's great. Well, Don Garlitz, you said from the very beginning that uh, that could be the matchup, Ormsby and Amato. You were sure right. Well, Gary Ormsby takes his traditional starting line advantage and puts three hundredths of a second in the bank. Amato's car, on the other hand, begins to misfire a little on one of the cylinders. This highly competitive world of drag racing, that's a no-no. It allows Gary Ormsby to take a very decisive win. Here's Steve. Well, in the never-ending battle between Gary Ormsby and Joe Amato, this one, Gio, belongs to you. Well, thank you, Steve. It was uh, really hard. This was a tough weekend. You know, Joe has been tough all weekend. He's kind of upstaged us every on everything we've done this weekend except this final round, and we're real pleased to win. He'd run a 499. He'd run a 498. Back and forth. Exactly. And we ran, finally run a 490. He runs 495. And that's how what a tough competitor he is, and that's how tough this uh, points chase is. Had he beat you, he would be the leader. That's for sure. I and mean, we knew that going in here. We wanted to win this real bad because every point counts and that's 200 more right there. Again, congratulations. Thank you, Steve. And of course, we would be remiss in not congratulating Chuck Etchells on his first ever National Event Funny Car victory. Of course, that moment was lost and all the concern about Johnny West, I'm sure Chuck understands. A great day for Gary Ormsby, who waited so long for his first Winston title. He won it in 1989. And now with the victory today, he increases his point lead to 200. Could be headed for another title. For Steve Evans and Don Garlitz, this is Don Crickey. Glad you could be with us at the Budweiser Summer Nationals. This has been NBC's Sports World. And today it was brought to you by Goodyear Eagle Radios, the best-selling performance radios in the world. By Autolite Spark Plug, guaranteed for two years no matter how far you go. By Haviland Superior Grade Motor Oil, get the most out of your car. And by Budweiser, with that clean, crisp, cold taste, this Bud's for you. The preceding has been a presentation of NBC Sports.